All right, I'm going to need someone to hold this for the, all right, there we go. <laughs> um, all right, we're continuing down our path of looking at different ways to uh, create layouts. And this one, we're going to go in, we're going to take sort of the layout that we had last time and change it up uh, a bit. Um, and we will make our one HTML change. And I didn't make it, I, I could have put this in from the start, but I didn't want to muddy, muddy the waters at all, so I didn't. We'll go back and, and put it in. The layout that we're going to work on is going to be based on this one. And we were starting to move to where the layout was not frozen like the other layout was. In other words, this layout is responsive to the size of the screen, at least to some degree. Notice it's not completely responsive, but it is partly responsive to that. And sort of the phrase that we, we used for that was a, uh, a Jello page, whereas um, it moves a little bit, but doesn't totally collapse. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is, is what I want, ultimately, is for it to look sort of like this. I want it to look like this. Whereas, right now, it's like this. Whereas, the width of this moves in and out, but it stays flush against the left. It does that for the different areas. What I want to have is I want to have the content of my page centered and as I move the margins or the space between the edge of the page and that moves back and forth a little bit. So sort of a different way of making it uh, jello-y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, in order to accomplish this, I'm going to create a container div. And a container div is something that is nice to have even if you don't use it initially. So a lot of times what I will do is as I create my page, even if I don't plan on using it for a style, I'll put it in in case I want to do it later. Especially remembering the fact that uh, once I start cloning these, it's hard to make the HTML changes. All right. So I'll go in here and I will wrap around all my text a div with an ID of container. Now there's nothing magical about these IDs. I tend to use the same ones each time, all right, simply out of habit. I tend to use the same sort of names each time. But um, don't don't lead you uh, don't don't think that that like means anything in particular. All right. Uh, in other words, uh, I've heard some people use wrapper instead of container or any number of different uh, uh, terms for that. All right. So we have that wrapped around the uh, the code, and I'll go and I'll do this to my other three pages or four pages or whatever, and this will hopefully reinforce how painful it is to do this more than one time and as a result reinforce the fact that we want to get this done right the first time and therefore we should be really sure that the HTML we create is the HTML we want because after we've started cloning it we have to make that change repeatedly. You can imagine how easy it would be if you were doing a bunch of pages to skip one or to you know paste this in the wrong place or to forget to go in and put the, the end tag or something along those lines. Now, when I do this initially, we're not going to really notice any difference. Because I don't have any style rules associated with the container.
Do I ever? <laughs> Absolutely. There's a couple different ways. One way you can do it, first of all, is by indenting. That's why I stress the indenting. So let me make the fonts a little bit smaller here so we can see that. What I typically do is I typically try to indent in a consistent manner. So that, I, I, I should be able to tell, provided I've done everything properly, this div goes with that end div. Okay. All right? That's the one thing uh, that, that can be done uh, for that. Uh, another thing that can be done is as soon as you put the start tag, put the end tag. All right? The other thing is there are some editors, I don't know if Notepad Plus is on here or not, if you look in Notepad Plus, they will uh, they will code that, um, and that'll show you um, what are grouped together. Um, I don't see Notepad Plus in here. Um, when you get the lab, take a look at it in Notepad Plus, and you'll see how how it will put things together. Lastly, your other recourse would be to put HTML comments on your page. To tell you, you could do something like this. Start of container div and of container div. So any of those techniques, either by indenting properly or by using HTML comments or by using an editor that, that shows you what belongs with what uh, are a good solution. Personally, I just make sure I'm indenting correctly and that usually takes care of it. There are actually some utilities. I think if you, I think if you run it through the validator, there's something called HTML tidy, I think that will go and it will indent it for you and that, that can be useful in finding uh, where your missing tags are as well. All right, so let's see. I think this is the only one I haven't gotten yet. So I'm thinking I've gotten all of them now. I'm going to verify the dates of these to make sure that stuff were updated today. Yep, everything was updated today. If we look at this now, there really is no difference because we haven't put any style on uh, we haven't put any style on the, uh, the div, all right? So really, uh, all we did is we went in and we put um, a um, container div at the beginning and at the end of it, and then container div. All right, now we're going to go and we're going to style it. And there's a couple different ways you can do this, as always. Um, we're going to go in here and I'm going to put a style on my container and I'm going to get rid of these buttons. I know, you still have that example if you want them. Alright, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put for container I'm going to give it a width of 800 pixels And I'm going to do margin 0px auto. And if you remember, what that does is when you specify it in that mode, um, you go around clockwise. So in other words, um, 0 pixels on top, auto on this side, 0 pixels on the bottom, auto on this side. All right? So, we can go back to this, save it, and let's see if we have to make any other adjustments. Alright, now it's in the middle there, and 
as we go back and forth, we notice that it um, has a little bit of wiggle room on the side, but the main content area stays centered. I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a color on the container. So I'm going to say background white. All right, then I'm going to change the style for the links. Uh, let's make them blue, red if they're visited, and black if you hover on them. That looks good. And we can make them so they extend horizontally by putting back some of that style that we had before, namely nav li um, display inline block and I think I want to space those out a little bit so I will put on these a margin left of 20 pixels. Let's see how that goes. I spaced it out some. I think we can ditch the borders now. I don't think the borders really add anything to it. So I'll go and get rid of those borders. Um, border on the banner, border on here, Oops. and was there another border? Yeah. You did? I, I did? Let's see. Sure enough, I did. Uh, well, I meant to do that. <laughs> All right. Um, now, uh, again, this is this is pretty much what I described. Um, notice that it go. Whoops. Notice that it as we resize this, the margin on the side adjusts. It never gets smaller than 800 pixels, though, because we set an absolute width of 800 pixels, and everything is sized within that. Um, the last thing I'm going to do on this is I want to give the navigation bar uh, a little bit of color just so that it stands out a little bit more, um, because that's an awful big block of white code there. Or, or white space. So I'll go in and I'll make the nav area have a background color of uh, let's do a shade of gray. So let's say pound sign um, a, 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 A. All right. All right, we could quibble with the colors or play around till we got how we like, but I think that, that at least gets the idea across and looks, looks reasonably good. And again, notice that as this resizes, it does it to a point. Now, question. If I make the nav, if I give it a width of 80%, all right, how wide is it going to be? The container is, let's say, let's say the screen is 1,000 pixels, the container is 800 pixels, and the banner I make 80%. Is it 80% of 1,000 or 80% of the 800? The correct answer is it's 80% of the 800. 
In other words, when you give something as a percentage, it's a percentage of the space that's available to it. So, if I have something that looks like this, or I've defined this as 800 pixels, and we'll forget about margin and all that stuff for now, but if this is 800 pixels, and I define this or any element as being 80%, it's not 80% of the whole screen, it's 80% of its container. All right. So we can more or less show that by just putting a, a quick width on here. We'll do a nice even 50% maybe to make it. So notice as it's, it's not 80% of, the, or I'm sorry, 50% of the entire screen is 50% of the container. All right, because that's when you, when you size it, that's what you get. All right. We could just as well, instead of saying uh, a width of the container uh, of, um, 800 pixels, express it as a percentage. So we can make the width of it 80%. Now that 80% is 80% of the whole screen because the container isn't inside of something else. The container is outside of everything. So I could put a percentage sign there and notice as I move it, both the width of the, of, the, of the container and the size of the margin moves. Pardon me? Yes. It's, it, yeah, anytime you say 80% it's, it's relative to the size of the container. And in this case, a container div it fills up the whole screen, so it's 80% of that. Well, this is where I don't like to split hairs. Some would call this liquid. I would call it, well, I don't know. I, I, I guess either way is fine. I mean, it, it does sort of maintain its shape. Things don't move alongside of each other. When we see like a real something that we can definitely stamp as, as liquid, it moves around even more than this. But this is pretty liquidy, right? Because if you notice, as you get smaller and smaller and smaller, that wraps around there. All right. Now, you might say, gee, why would I want to do this? Well, this might not be a bad layout on a mobile device. It might not be the best layout, but it wouldn't be a horrible layout on a mobile device. Uh, and very few people are going to make their screens this wide if they're simply browsing, right? Um, you know, typical person browsing the screen would be that width. Yes? Repeat that, please. Yeah, you can. I'm, I'm not sure if there are uh, if, if there's any browser issues with that cross browser compatibility. I do recall some, but you can also specify a min width. So I could say maybe a minimum width of 400 pixels, let's say, and we'll test it across browsers to see if there's an issue. All right. Notice that yeah, I made it made it a little too wide. 500. Notice that it doesn't get any smaller than that because I put a minimum width. Let's see if this works in Internet Explorer though. At least with the version of IE that we're running. That works, but the links does uh, doesn't. What did um, I remember seeing this before? Yeah, you can say in line. I don't know what version of stuff they're running here. It strikes me that this is a very old version of IE. So, and that works too. It doesn't get any smaller. So, yeah, that's a good point. It's a good sort of compromise that you can make it so small, but not too small. All right. Um, question? When you press F12 in this version, 
I don't know, does it? In IE? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know in, in Firefox there's any number of extensions that uh, you can go that, that have a lot of nice handy uh, features in it. Uh, they, pardon me? Yeah, Google Chrome is very good on that as well. Um, any of the open source ones, right, because people can write their own code for it. Microsoft being proprietary, you sort of have to rely on, on theirs. But yeah, if it does that, that that's great. They're, they're probably trying to incorporate some of those features because they're very popular in. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about our next iteration of this. All right. Our next iteration of this, we're going to want this. We're going to want to sort of combine this. We're going to want to combine this with the very first example that we did. which look like this. Notice that they're not stacked on top of each other. They are stacked side by side. So we're going to want sort of this sort of behavior. We're going to want our page to be inside a container that as we resize we keep it centered, but we're going to want these things to be looking like this. All right. So we're going to try to do that so that they're side by side, and yet as we move it, that margin goes back and forth. Now, we can't make the position absolute, right? Because if we made the position absolute, then those things wouldn't move and the margin wouldn't adjust itself. So therefore, we can't use absolute positioning, so we're going to have to use something else. Yet, we don't simply want the flow of one thing after another. All right. So let's go in and let's change this. And let me copy this. and make a new copy so that we can make our changes without destroying the other one. All right, so we can go in here and what I can do is I can specify a width of the navigation to be I'm going to give a width to the container, an absolute width. Um, I'm going to give a width of the navigation of 200 pixels. And I'm going to give a width of the content area to, say, 700 pixels. Now, I'm going to also, give a color to the content area so we can see what's going on with it. And we might replace it with a different color later on, but right now I'm going to give it a background color of yellow so it will stand out. All right. So let's see what we got here. Oh, I'm also going to change the navigation back to where it is uh, in, uh, not in line so that it, it goes vertically because we want our links to be oriented vertically. So let's go and save this and look at that. Well, we're not there yet, right? Because, yes I did, pound sign content. I also have it as white. Those are kind of things, by the way, that the validator can help you with um, if you run into those sort of difficulties. Um, 
There we go. All right. So, I don't want that to be 700. I want it to be 500. All right. So, we're sort of there, except for the fact that this area here is dropped below that. Why? Because we haven't done anything with the positioning. If you don't do anything with the positioning, what does it do? It simply puts it in a normal flow, one thing after another down the line. Now, because it's in a container, that flow sort of moves with this container, so we do have that part of it done, but we really want this up there. All right, so how do we achieve that? We can't use absolute positioning. Why? Because we want it here if the window is this wide. If the window is wider, we want it here. Notice that's a different position on the window. All right? If, in absolute terms. In other words, right now, notice that my cursor is below the eye in information. So if the window is this wide, I want it here. If the window is this wide, I want it here underneath the F in forms or, or closer to the F in forms. So it's not, I, I can't absolutely put it there. What I can use instead though is I can use relative positioning. All right? And what do we mean by relative positioning? Relative positioning means relative to where the flow would normally put it. All right? We've seen where the flow normally puts this one. All right? So, where do we want this relative? We want it pushed over, let's say, 250 to the left, or, or from the left, rather. Yeah, to the left, from the left, whatever. And we want it up, eh, maybe 200 pixels. We can try it out and see. So, we want it 250 further to the left, and 200 less from the top. So, what I can say on that div is position relative, so we're not nailing it down at a specific place on the page, but relative to where it would otherwise be, I want it to be left, let's say 280 pixels, and top negative 200 pixels. Just think of negative as meaning backwards, you know. Instead of being further down, it's going to be further up. And now if we view this, alright, I mis misestimated a little bit. Let's make that, uh, I don't want to go quite that high. Let's make it 160. And let's make the left more like 260. Alright, it's getting closer. Uh, again, we could fiddle those with those numbers till we got it exact, but what we have again is we have then that sort of jello enus, whereas this moves around, and yet relative to this, these items are fixed. So it's sort of fixed inside of a relative thing. All right? So that's another way that we can lay this out through the use of relative positioning. And again, relative positioning, anytime you hear something saying relative, you know, the question always should be relative to what? And in this case, relative to wherever it would normally otherwise be. All right? If we simply use the flow layout. Questions? All right, what's our next way of doing it? All right, one thing to keep in mind, you know, consider all these techniques as being, you know, tools in your tool belt. All right, will you use all of them on all the sites? No, absolutely not. Um, are, is it possible to do the same thing several different ways? Sure. Will one way maybe lend itself to one design better than other ways? Yeah. All right. 
It's your job sort of to, to know all the things that you can do and make the decision of what you're going to do based on the particular project that you're looking on. Again, if you want a very specific layout that you want to really look the same across a lot of different platform screen sizes and all that, you probably want to do everything fixed because you don't want things moving around. You don't want things moving in a, a different position if uh, you resize the screen. All right. If you want to accommodate people with larger monitors and smaller monitors, you might make things relative then. All right. So it really depends on, on your specific project of what you want to do. <clears throat> the next concept we're going to do is we're going to show a different way to do this same thing. All right. A different way to use to do the same thing using what's called floating. All right. Now. Floating is one of the more confusing concepts in CSS, at least in my opinion. All right. What I'm going to try to do is try to give you an overview of it and, and give you the basics of how it works. And then we'll make the changes here and we'll, we'll play around a little bit with it. All right. We'll see what we come up with. All right. Here's sort of the idea of floating. Let's say. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new page. Called float.html. Because I think a lot of these things are better shown than explained. Alright. And I'll also make my our next copy of that. So I have float.html. And let me go in and I'm going to put the style right in the document just so this it's more convenient. This is just an example anyhow. And I'm going to get rid of my divs and I'm going to put div1 and div2 in tribute to Dr. Seuss. Normally it's good to give descriptive names of what kind of content is going to be in the divs, but in this case since this is just um, an a example, just sort of a, a sandbox for us to play around, it really doesn't make sense. Then I'm going to go and grab some Greek text and put it, put it in both. All right. All right, we have our two Greek text, uh, text divs. And if we go and look at these and look at our example, we'll see two divs, one on top of the other. Right? Here's the first div, here's the second div. I'm going to give these different colors just so that we can uh, follow it. I'll, I'll make one um, yellow and I will make one not yellow. All 
All right. So now we can see where the divs are. Might be a little hard to read that text, but that's okay. It doesn't make sense anyhow. All right. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm first going to put them and I'm going to associate a width on them. Right now, again, there's no positioning applied to these at all. And there's no style applied to them all other than the background color. Therefore, they appear in the flow layout, one on top of the other. And they're block elements, so by default, they take up 100% of the width. All right. And one is underneath the other. So what I'm going to do is do this. I'm going to give each of these a width. So I'll give a width of each of these of 300 pixels. All right. And what's it going to look like? It's going to look just like this, except it's going to be cut off. So each one of them is going to be longer, but they'll still be stacked on top of each other because I haven't done anything with the position. All right. Now, it'd be nice if we could slide that right along there. And we could, and we could do it with absolute positioning, but then as you move the screen around, um, you could cut stuff off. We could also do it with relative positioning, but that could get dicey too, depending on how, how big that div is. We'd need to know how tall that div is, how tall this div is to use relative positioning. So we're going to do something called we're going to float the divs. All right? And typically, you can float divs either right, left, top, or bottom, but typically you float divs to the left. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for both of these divs, float left. All right? So I'll go and save this, and then I'll view this. And there they are side by side, at least for now. All right. Let's analyze what the browser does. All right. This window, I would guess, would be approximately 800 pixels across. We'll pretend that it is. All right. Even though I don't know exactly what it is, that's probably not a bad guess. Might maybe 900. So our window, let's say is 900 pixels going across. All right. So we said each of the divs have a width of 300. And we said to float them to the left. All right. What that means is it's going to take the first, instead of flowing them this way, it's going to take the first div and sort of slide it going to the left if there's enough space for it. I should draw this more to scale. That would be the first div, let's say. Now, that takes up presumably 300 pixels. And we're going to forget about now any margin or, or borders or anything like that. We'll just consider them to be zero. All right. Now we have another 300 pixel div that we want to put alongside. And we also say float left. The way this works is if there's space for it alongside of it, it will put it alongside of it. If there's not space alongside of it, it will drop it down underneath. So that's sort of the idea of float. So watch what happens. All right. I am at 900, let's say. So I make this smaller, smaller, smaller. As I move the browser window, <coughs> excuse me, there is still enough room to put both of them in, right? We have extra space. Watch what happens when we get right about here. Boom, it drops down underneath. All right. So right there, there's enough space to put everything in on the same line because we floated it from the left. Here, there's no longer space, so it slides it down underneath. And that's sort of the basics of floating. All right. If there's space for it alongside, it will put it alongside. If there's not, it will put it below. All right. Now, with numbers like that, it's pretty straightforward, right? With 300 and 300, we can actually do the math and figure it out. When you start adding margins and borders, and maybe one of these things is relative and one of them is absolute, then it gets more dicey, right? For example, we could make 
this, instead of a width of 300 pixels, we could make this a width of 50%. All right. All right. So, the yellow takes up 300 pixels. The gray takes up 50% of whatever it's contained in, of its container. Well, this container is the whole screen, right? Because it's, it's just in the body. So this takes up 50% of the space from here to here. As I make this smaller, notice what happens. That stays constant, right? Because I define the width as 300 pixels. This one adjusts itself to be 50% of the new available space. At some point, right around 600 pixels, let's say, there's not going to be enough space to put 300 pixels plus 50% of the screen. For example, if we are at 500 pixels, the width of the screen is 500 pixels, right? It's going to want to use 250 of them for this, and it will use 300 for that. Well, 300 plus 250 is 550. So when the screen is 500 pixels wide, there's not enough space to put both of these side by side, the 300 and the 50 percent, all right? And therefore, similarly, it will drop it down. All right. Likewise, as we go and add padding and, and that sort of thing, then things get more complex as well. Because again, you have to take those into account. Padding, let's say 5px margin. 5px border uh, one, um, 2px solid black. And I'll put this on that as well. All right. Now it won't take until it hits 600. It will do it a little above 600, right? We could do the math to figure out the exact point, but uh, that doesn't seem interesting to me right at this moment, so we won't. But we should be able to, right? Because we know that this div takes 300 plus 2 times 5 plus 2 times 5 plus 2 times 2, so whatever that turns out to be. That's how much space that's going to make. So this other div is going to take the same amount because I made everything the same. And therefore, when the screen isn't wide enough to contain both those, then it's going to drop down. Now, when, this, when might be this sort of thing be effective? Can you imagine a web page where you had content that resized itself in this manner? What would this be good for? You're right, it's good for nothing. We can just forget everything we talk. No, 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 that's clearly not the case. A gallery with a small description. A gallery with a small description. And, and how would that be uh, effective? If you want to have like a certain size picture. Okay. 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 All right. If you had a, a gallery, let's say, with descriptions, you know, you had a photo gallery. Uh, if someone's viewing it on a wide monitor, they'll see maybe three pictures going across. If they're viewing it on a narrower monitor, maybe they'll see two pictures or even one picture going across. Um, yes? Yeah, on a different device, on a mobile device. Let's say this is a news article and I'm, I'm accessing it on a desktop machine or I'm also accessing it on my, my phone. All right. If this is a news article all right, and I'm accessing it, on my screen, this is a two-column um, article, like in a newspaper, column side by side, or in a magazine. All right? It's sort of a good idea to break up your text anyhow and not have long lines of text to read across. 
Yet, you got these gigantic monitors, you know, or some people do, and it's nice to be able to take advantage of it. You know, you paid for it, you might as well use it. So for people with bigger screens, you can make it a two or three or whatever column article. And they can read it. And their eyes are safe from having to go up and down. All right. And yeah, and they're also safe from horizontal scrolling because they can fit more on one screen. However, if I go and view this on a mobile device, then um, I don't have to scroll sideways because at a certain point, my screen's going to get small enough where I'm going to go and I'm going to scroll vertically like that. So viewing this on another device, view, you know, having a news article or having a block of content that um, you want to fill the screen if the screen's wide enough, but otherwise you want to make it single columns is, is a great uh, example of when you would want to use this technique. Yes? Well, yeah. One thing, one thing to keep in mind, unless you explicitly say so, it's never going to cut off your content. So what it will do, if it really absolutely cannot fit it in, it will give you a horizontal scroll bar. Now, let's say I do a percentage. And let's say I make this a 32%. Now this is where it really gets sort of goofy because we're mixing a relative of a 33% with an absolute number on the margin and, and, and all that. So let's look at this. All right. As we make it smaller than at a certain point it's going to do that and then beyond a certain point it actually goes outside of the box, yeah. Which again, it's very unlikely that someone would have a screen this big and you know, it's probably not an issue. All right, so here we've gone and we've created this with uh, just these two demonstration divs. All right, so you know, I, I, I hope I've illustrated the, 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 the method of using the float. What we'll do next time is actually try to incorporate that into our actual example, our, our vegetable garden, and, and, and create this uh, actual pages as opposed to just the, the, this sort of test page. All right, I would also suggest and, and gently remind you that after Wednesday is spring break, all right? I haven't decided if I'm going to go to Mexico, to Florida, to Jamaica, or get my hair cut and get an oil change. I, I'm leaning in one direction, all right? We'll leave that up to you which one uh, is going to be. I say this as a reminder that, believe it or not, the semester is half done, or actually more than half done when you consider that this is week eight and there's 15 weeks of classes, all right? Which means that before you know it, the project is going to be due, all right? Therefore, I would urge you, uh, in addition to covering this, we may have uh, a bit of time to brainstorm a little bit about the project. So if you have not read the project materials, if you haven't given any thought to the project, please make a point to do that before next time and we can spend some time. If you've done some work, please bring it in and, and we can look at it, we can discuss it and, and go from there. People that, that volunteer to give information about their project um, benefit from having, uh, getting feedback from it, you know, far in advance. So if you have some work on it, bring it in and share it. It'll work to your advantage. And it will help those folks that haven't done it maybe get an idea of what they need to do. All right, so we'll see you over in lab.